Governments should have been open always from the beginning and every time, and they were. In the past you can walk into any ministry and look at the documents and etc. Now this whole movement of transparency, of having access to government documents and data, is nothing new. The only thing that has changed is that nowadays we have the methods and the systems and the standards and the software and the tools to really deliver on that promise. And that's what governments are interested in. They want to do this. Most governments really want to do the right thing. They're not here to abuse you or suck the data out of you. They really want to serve their citizens. And open standards, open source and open content allow them to do it. So let's help them. And don't forget the fact that open source and open standards will save significant amounts of money which is always good for taxpayers. It started when we had the software patent discussion in Europe. This opened a floodgate of discussions on openness, transparency, and etc. The Dutch government made it a national policy. And Frank Heemskerk, who is uh, the minister in the uh, Ministry of, of Economics, he said, we need to convert the Dutch government, all public institutions, etc., to the three big O's, open source, open standard, open content. And he codified this in law. So Dutch public agencies of whatever kind, cities, ministries, whatever, they are forced to use open standards for data exchange. They can use proprietary software to generate it, that's not the problem. But it must be in an open standard. Now the core reason for using open standards, like ODF, the open document format, PDF, um, HTML, JPEG, etc., the core argument is data sustainability. They generate a lot of data nowadays, they have lots of computers, lots of storage, and, and they have a lot of stuff in there. And they're slowly but surely seeing the fact that they've locked up their data in proprietary containers. So they're asking the question, what is the best service we can give to our citizen? And the best service to give to the citizen is to open up the data with open standards, make it wherever possible open content that everyone can use because taxpayers paid for it. So if people cannot attach to their data 30 years from now, and it's going to take a lot of money to reattach to that data, and this is what people nowadays call migration costs. Effectively, I would call it recycling costs, because it's really about recycling stuff that you locked up. So think about all of this proprietary data as digital waste. And you have to recycle the digital waste to get to your green IT. And recycling digital waste, you can call it migration, but it gives the wrong impression. Effectively, it's about connecting to the data that you already own and make it accessible to other instruments, programs, people, etc. And this concept, if you look at it that way, then the migration costs that are typically accounted for the new solution effectively are exit costs from your old system. And if you take these costs as exit costs from your old system, then suddenly the migration is not that expensive. Because that's what it's all about. Free your data, reuse your data, recycle your data in efficient ways. That's what should be green IT. <clears throat> Having sustainable data, caring about sustainable digital data. That's what it's about.